I'm going to make a hexagonal box. It's going to have a lid and a body. First, I'm taking an A4 sheet of paper and dividing it in two to make two A5 sheets. So I start off by folding it in half and then creasing it firmly. After I've made the crease, I fold it over in the other direction so that I'll be able to tear it neatly. One more fold, crease again, and now I can tear it in half. So now, to make a hexagonal box, I want to have one extra side. So I'm going to first fold over one-eighth of the sheet of paper. So first I fold it in half, mark the corners, don't crease. Then I'm going to fold a quarter. Again I want to mark the edges to show me what size a quarter is. And now I kind of forget what I'm doing and start creasing it. which is not what you're supposed to do. Now I'm going to fold over one eighth. So what I'll have now is I'll have one eighth of the paper folded back and then the rest of the paper I'll be able to fold into sixths. And this way I'll have the six sides of my hexagonal box plus one extra short side which I can use to match the two ends together. So now I'm creasing back one eighth, nice and neatly. And I'm ready to fold into sixths. So the first step is to fold thirds. So to fold thirds, I, you can see it makes a kind of an S shape, which I can then flatten out. And if you get the ends nice and neat there, you'll have thirds. So that's the one side just adjusting it a little bit to make sure it lines up perfectly and that's one side folded into thirds. Now the other side also just adjust it until the edges match up to this folds Alright, so now I've got my thirds, I'm going to crease them now There we go. So now I have the paper folded into thirds with one eighth folded over at the one end. Now I'm going to halve each of the thirds to make six panels. So I fold over the one end. Right, there's the thirds. Right, so I fold over the one side to make my first sixth. Then I fold over the other side, which is where I've got the one eighth folded back. And now, to be able to fold in the center neatly, I should fold back the one side so that they both fold in the same direction and I can get the two ends to line up neatly. So now I've got the paper folded into sixths, plus a one-eighth side. Now what I need to do is to find the height to which the bottom of the folds need to be creased. So what I do is I take two panels and I fold the corner in so that the tip of the triangle matches up with the the center of the two panels. Now I can mark that height because that's the height at which I need to fold it in. So there we have it, the tip of the corner gives me the height. 
and I'm going to do it on the other side as well. Now I can't use the, the 1 8 side, that's too short, so I fold that back and then fold the corner in. And again, the tip of the triangle, I'm not going to crease this one, but the tip of the triangle gives me the height at which I'm going to fold it in. So now I've got two points and I can make a fold all along the length of the paper. So I fold it at each of the two crease points, each of the two points which I've identified, and fold it back. Now the right way to find out whether this is straight is to look at um, whether the folds line up. So the crease which you folded back, each of these lines has to line up with the one which it's folding next to, so that line is straight. Then you know that you've got it lined up perfectly. Now just to make sure that everything's creased neatly, I'm going to fold each of them in and then I can start making the interlocking folds which will form the base. Now what I want this to do is it has to fold in to make the corner of the hexagon. So to make that work, each of the rectangular panels that's formed by the, the side that's been folded in has to get folded along its diagonal. So I folded one of them in now and I'm going to fold each of them in in the same way. So it's maybe a bit hard to see on this paper but each of those rectangles has to get folded in on its diagonal. So you can start seeing the picture there. So as, as you fold each of them in, you form another angle of the hexagon. I find it's actually easier to fold it in this way because you know that you're forming the base of your of your box properly and also you can check that it's uh, that it's folded in the right direction So now I've got almost all of them folded in. The last one, the one on the edge, you can just you can just fold it straight. You don't need to do much with it, but uh, I've just kept the pattern and and folded it in in the same way. So at the end of this, each of the six panels has been divided down its diagonal, but the very last panel is slightly different because it's shorter than the rest. So to make that work, what I do is I fold it twice. So I fold it in and then fold it over again so that I can get the right diagonal. And then I just fold on the fold that I've already made. I fold very lightly on the diagonal fold I've made, which will then because I folded it twice, it's now exactly the same fold on the end. And you'll see it doesn't go right into the corner. So, but at least I've got it on the right angle. So that when I fold it all together, it's going to match up with the one on the other end. So now you can see as this folds in, as they all fold together, they form a hexagon. But the trick is going to be to get it all to fold in one interlocking motion. So first let me form the side of the box. So to make it nice and neat I'm folding over the, the top just a little bit and uh, depending on how high you want your box to be you can adjust this. And then once you fold it in the top fold you fold it once more and you want to end up just above the base of the box. 
because what you're going to do is once you fold it in the base, once you've done the, the creasing of the base, you want it to fold in under the, uh, the side of the box. You'll see how it works in a moment. So now you've got a, a sort of a, um, a folded in structure like that and you want it to interlock on the two ends. So you have to push the two ends into each other. You'll find there's only one way that it really works. They have to sort of spiral in along with each other. And this is a little bit tricky, but you can just sort of fit them in and push them in. There you go, and now they slide in nicely. So now the box's side interlocks. And now the trick is going to be to fold in all the, the base panels so that they all sort of fold in together. Now you can't see what I'm doing here because my hands are in the way. But don't worry, when I do the lid I'll show you how it works. This is actually the, the, sometimes the trickiest part and uh, if it doesn't work as neatly as this one then you'll find um, you have to really push and shape it to make it work perfectly, but just this time it, it folded very neatly. But don't worry, when I make the lid you'll see a bit more detail. And when you fold the base in, you can see it, it fits in very nicely under the fold of the side that I've made. So there you have it, one half of the box is done.